Kirsten, as a manifesting generator, you're lying to. You did allude to some of the challenges you ran into earlier about sort of the, you know, with the channel, the 2034, the sacral to the throat, the busiest channel, busy, 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 and how the two, you know, even though it's unconscious in your, in your profile, you, you have to make it conscious. Like you have to make a deliberate attempt to nurture your two. Mm -hmm. um, so for other manifesting generators with the two in their profile and particularly unconscious, um, can you elaborate a little bit more about that experience, that journey? Uh, so I, I think something that I that just came up when um, Lisa was was talking about like her, her strategy and the informing part. So I found it a blessing to <laughs> to know that I have to wait and respond um, because that <clears throat> gave me the possibility to make up my own mind, see what's going on around me, and then pick the pieces that I would like to respond to. So um, because like I'm in marketing and branding and, you know, there's, I feel there's a lot of pressure that you have to be out there. You have to market yourself. So now how I use it is I see what is going on that I would like to add to. And then I pick that consciously. And this gives me kind of permission to and it gives me um, an inner it kind of turns on my sacral so I see something is going on I said oh this is something I can I can add to I can to I can respond that sets my sacral on fire and I'm not in my hermit phase anymore where I'm maybe shy and I don't know should I say or not because I know this is something I can do and then I'm just out there and do so so the responding part was really a blessing for me. I, I thought, oh my God, this is so cool. <laughs> Which is interesting feedback because I think for many MGs when they first find out, you know, they're, they're not manifestors and, you know, and this is what it's like, what do you mean I have to wait? The response, like, what, what, wait, wait. Yeah. Yeah. wait. And, you know, I, I did, um, so, so how I have found out that it actually is a blessing because I have so many ideas in the past, for example, I, I wanted to launch a program and I had it all mapped out. I thought, oh, I do this and this and this and this. And so, and then I, I launched it and nobody responded. And I thought, it's so good. Like, why is nobody buying this? I don't get it. So, and I think it was just too early because I don't know what maybe was the wrong audience. I don't know. So then the next time, I had another great idea. <laughs> so I thought, okay, before I put this out in the world, I'm just testing and waiting for a response. So then I just ask, so, hey, I'm and in a conversational style, um, many of them, like I said, okay, here, this is what I'm, uh, what I'm planning to do. I just want to have some, some thoughts, like, like, is like, what do you think about this and this? So I was initiating a response and then not really people don't really respond and I thought okay I'm not going for it but the same post is still up and like three months later suddenly people are saying hey are you still doing this and I think oh maybe I was too early I'm just holding the space for this idea it's not gone it's still good and now I can act on it Nice. I love the, I love how you illustrated that and the um, the difference between initiating and jumping into that, you know, versus uh, mm -hmm. the waiting for the response. Because sometimes it really isn't that the idea is bad; it's just the timing isn't correct. You know, people yeah. aren't ready to receive it. Yeah. Um, and that's you know one of the many ways why waiting to respond really has a tremendous amount of value. Mm -hmm. so, what yeah. I also I, I mentioned earlier that I'm really working on my mind and body connection so i'm i'm working to like to ask my sequel okay is this something i should do yes mm -hmm. or no and mm -hmm. i'm really feeling that i'm getting the hang <laughs> of it and not just that also trusting it because that's the next step like if your sacral says yes it's another thing to do it or not you know um so a lot of times i i, I feel it i said oh i think it's a yes and i think Oh, I don't know, maybe I don't want it. Or well, Seiko says no, and I think, I think it's a great idea. I'm still going to do it. And then, yeah, not so good. Um. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I'm laughing because I've been there, done that, and I appreciate. Yes, <laughs> I think we should have a um, what's it called, like a like a support group for poor generator types that like are basically going out and initiating, and everything's falling flat in their face. They're like, yeah. oh my god, yes. <laughs>